my name is Mike Oden, and I was born in Powers Lake, North Dakota, and grew up in Minot, North Dakota. And we came down here to, to Holdingport in 1968 and taught here at the high school for 31 years. Well, over the years, I've uh, it's changed quite a bit, uh, especially when I was teaching. I kind of, uh, because I was just out of college when I started teaching, I was experimenting a lot with different kinds of media, uh, learning along with the kids, really. Uh, and did all that and when I retired in 99 I pretty much quit painting and everything got into knife making for a couple of years and then I quit all art for about 10 years and about six years ago I started painting again and this time I just had a different attitude about it and I found that uh, I was doing similar types of things in the past but never uh, as concentrated as I am now. So I'm on this series for the last six years that I've been working with. I think to a degree, I, I, I don't like change. <laughs> and uh, that's probably why we've been in this house for uh, almost 50 years, 50 some years. When we built my studio on, I think I've sat out in the studio for the first year and really didn't do much because I was used to cramped little spaces to work with and all of a sudden I have this huge area and uh, transitioning from quitting retiring from teaching uh, was a big uh, big change and just uh, I don't know just kind of the mental thing wasn't there most of my art has a tendency to be uh, very introspective and uh, I was finally able to give myself the freedom to just paint for myself. And uh, it took a while to figure that out, that that's what I was gonna do. Not really. Um, I was encouraged. Uh, my father passed away when he was 34. And uh, my mother encouraged me to be in the arts. She tried. She even sent me to violin lessons, and that didn't last very long. I got uh, kicked out of the high or junior high orchestra because I was so bad. But uh, I did like drawing and painting, and I had an uncle uh, from Washington that was a commercial artist, and I got to meet him a couple of times. And I took art in high school, and I enjoyed it. And uh, so then I had a chance to go to college, and. Uh, that was the only thing that I wanted to go for would be for art. I had no idea what, but I just wanted to be in art. And then I got a scholarship, and so that kept me in school and uh, continued on. And then it was a question of, do you want a bachelor's degree or a teaching degree? So I went for the teaching degree, became an art teacher. Mm, that's been kind of, sometimes I have and sometimes I haven't. Uh, I don't even know if I call it. It's kind of like the, the saying that, you know, the more you know, the more you know how little you know. And so I'm kind of in that vein right now. I, so I'd say, I'd, am I really an artist? I don't know. All I know is that I'm making work that works for me. So I don't know if I go with the peg of, you know, of being an artist or what. I have, right like now, I'm no concern about selling work. That's not what I'm about, you know. And, uh, uh, I don't, I have, I have, uh, from teaching and, and working part-time now, it's enough to put bread on the table, and so now I don't have any of those kinds of inhibitions in terms of what I do. Oh, no, no, there was, there, it's, it was going to be, I was going to do something with art, I didn't know what, but, uh, and, uh, I, I was glad I wound up, you know, teaching, and I had a great experience in my career teaching down here. A uh, little plug for Holden for it. Uh, they have always been supportive of the arts, and I've had some great students over the years when I was teaching. Uh, and it was just, uh, it was primarily a good time, you know, I had a good career with it, really enjoyed it. 
Um, it's internal. I think it's re uh, over the years it's uh, been resolving some internal issues that I've had and uh, kind of exploring them in, in ways that kind of uh, just kind of let it flow out. Uh, is I, I try not to analyze it too much. Um, it, it's, uh, it is kind of like a maze thing when you look at my art there, but it's, and I use, have, I've kind of created some symbols and things that are my own little language that I use for uh, things and uh, kind of interpret, they'll lead me in directions. And a lot of times I just uh, let the paintings lead me. I don't do any, there's no pre-planning to them. Uh, I just kind of like to let them develop. And sometimes I'll work on a painting like right now, the one I'm working on, I know the general direction that I want it to go, but there's something that's not quite resolved in my mind before I do the next step, but I'm getting closer to going back to it. I just kind of walk by it and kind of peek at it and I was like, are you ready yet? You know, kind of thing. And uh, kind of go from there. Uh, probably the same thing it tells me when it's finished. Uh, it's the same type of thing. You just get to a point and I don't want to do anymore. You know, this is, this is balanced. It's, it's resolved in terms of what I was trying to do. And uh, whereas the direction I want to go of just something will come to me, an idea or whatever, and kind of, yes, that's kind of appropriate, you know, and, uh, and just follow it through. Sure. Do you think that, um... Yeah, I, I used to uh, just devour, I used to go down the cities to a Midway bookstore. And I, I was in, uh, uh, involved with a group of uh, fantasy artists and writers down in Minneapolis. Uh, me and a, a friend of mine, an English teacher from Holding Ford here, uh, and we'd go down and, and we'd always hit up this one bookstore and I'd buy art books. And, and uh, but the, yeah, it's, of course when I was really young, Picasso was a big deal. Uh, I would say, for some reason, Ad Reinhardt really made an effect on me and it was kind of like a, a sad thing. It was kind of like I almost want to stay away from it, but I was totally involved with the way he was able to do what he did. I don't know if you're acquainted with his work or not, but he did black paintings. And you'd sit there and you'd see photographs of them or whatever, or just walk by them. You, they were just a black square. But if you came in and you sat and looked at them, all of a sudden there'd be these subtle shades that'd be, come out at you. But unless you were willing to spend time to let those your eyes adjust, and I was able to see an uh, exhibit of his work at the Dayton's. They used to have a gallery downtown in Minneapolis. And these things were just magical. They're just incredible. And the way, there was no surface change. The canvas looked completely flat, but yet there were all these different levels. And they got very complex the longer you sat there. And a very meditative type of thing. Uh, he was very... Uh, uh, Influential, I think, and just in terms of that solidarity. Now, when you look at mine, mine just go the other way. The colors are just kind of wild. Uh, there's a freedom in that, uh, a freedom not to be restricted. Uh, I'm like my paintings. I don't see of them as a window. Like when you look at most realistic paintings, uh, people see it. Uh, them as, as like a window to look into this world where either the artist is trying to copy nature uh, or create uh, a, an illusion of, of what nature is about. And I try and kind of keep mine pretty flat in terms of the surface uh, and uh, uh, be contained. And I think that's partly why most of my paintings have a border in the painting. And, and sometimes that border is broken but uh, it's to kind of keep the, the viewer within that space, that, that field, and so that there's more of a vibration in and out as opposed to front and back, you know, in terms of depth like that. So I kind of like to keep it uh, 
that way. Just trying to um, deal with reality. Uh, the, the, the reality is, is, you know, the perception of reality. I would say that, you know, your, a person's perception of reality is your reality, and everybody has a slightly different perception. And uh, the, there's a way of, I can, when I used to paint, uh, when I try and paint for people or, or doing things like that, I, I was a chain smoker. And I'd, I'd catch myself with several cigarettes going at once. It was always a very tense situation whenever I was doing that. And uh, now it's kind of like a going back to the way it was when I was probably even in college. It's more of a pure thing and I can get lost in it. Uh, you know, like even when you're reading a book, if you really enjoy the novel, your time just goes away. You're totally lost within that world. And with the painting, now it's the same kind of thing. I just get lost within that world and it just kind of has its own form that uh, uh, doesn't really take me away from reality, but just puts me in another sense of it. Uh, we've got three uh, children and seven grandchildren. Um, our oldest son is down in the cities. He's the one with the top rank of marketing. And our daughter is over in, he has three kids, uh, him and his wife. And uh, in fact, two of them are at St. John's. And uh, their daughter is a junior in high school this year. And our daughter is over at Princeton and they have two kids. Daughter just graduated from college. And then uh, I've got a third son in Holding Fort, and uh, they've got two children, and both of those granddaughters are good artists. They're, they're, they're producing artists. I'm pretty impressed with them. I know my oldest son was very good in school. In fact, I tell a story on him. People, kids would tell him that he gets A's because his dad was the teacher. So he proved to them that he could get D's by doing, not handing in work and doing a really bad job on things and I would get so frustrated with him. So he finally got his D so that uh, he could prove that he wasn't getting A's just automatically. But he, he was uh, actually quite good. And uh, he does a lot of photography now and his, his photography is really good. Uh, the other two, uh, daughter not so much, and the other son has uh, gotten into photography himself lately, so I, I like that, so. I've, uh, well, uh, MikeOden.com uh, uh, is one place, uh, and uh, I'd like to say I'm connected on Facebook. I've got a Facebook uh, page. Or just Mike Oden, you know, and uh, and we primarily those two things. Oh, when, when Greg, and I say Greg went to school with my son, my oldest son. They were on the same football team and, and that, and uh, so and I I can't say that I really remember him. I probably did have know him, you know, in school. But when he came uh, a couple of years ago and came to and uh, met with me and the mayor and presented his idea about, you know, and it's like, well, this is fantastic, you know, it's like, uh, really? <laughs> you know, and then, then as he came back and started developing it more, I got more and more excited about it. And just, just watching it develop, I am unbelievably happy with what he has done, what he's giving to the community, the opportunities. And I love his idea of using as many local craftsmen in, on different kinds of things. You know, everything from the craft beer uh, that I guess is from Little Falls and that's gonna be changing and the, the coffee is hand ground or made in, in the area uh, to the tables that were made, I believe, by a, a, a shop in, uh, towards uh, Avon, you know, but just being able to use all these different local craftsmen is just fantastic. And what he's doing outside there with, with the, the maze, I just can't wait for this rose maze 
you know, to be able to walk through that and the, the wildflowers, I, I think it's just unbelievable. And uh, then um, looking forward to the artists uh, in residency type of thing. I mean, I could just go on and on and on uh, because I think there's just, it's going to be a big draw to holding for it. And with the trail, like my wife was over there again today. I think she's been there like four or five times. She has all these friends that are her age who are kind of widows. And they said, well, let's go have lunch at the Art in Motion. And so they were there today. And she was talking about all the bicyclists who coming off the trail because it's a great place to eat. <laughs> I'm doing a commercial for you now. <laughs> but, but it's great, you know, and, and uh, that was it K? KG, the, the, the young fellow from uh, St. Wendell, the piano player. Oh, TJ. Uh, TJ, yeah. And, and uh, I mean, it's just that kind of thing. It's just so unique, uh, no, no matter where you go. I, I think it's just fantastic. I'm just really, really happy with what he's done. Kind of, you know, that old saying, follow your heart, there's a lot of truth to that. Um, and in the arts, if you, you can decide to go about it several different ways. You can decide that you want to make a living at it. And uh, one of the artists who's going to be coming in uh, is from Holding for it, uh, Mark Skidlarik. Uh, he was a student. He didn't get all his skills from me. He, he went to other places after high school, but he was involved with art then. Uh, but he decided he wanted to be a potter and he has, I think, just done a fantastic job of developing that into a career, and you'll see that. Uh, and I think there are a couple others that have gone into the arts too. So it, as far as making it a, a profession, to, you can have it either way or both. You know, you can either plan on making a living with it or you can just do it for yourself. If you want to call it a hobby or whatever, I could, if you want to call me a hobbyist, I don't care. <laughs> it's still mine. It doesn't change anything.